if we're going to be able to Awesome. And one of the fears I have when it comes to setting goals or achieving goals is that maybe it will take away from something else. And then what I realized though, I wasn't sharing what I wanted to accomplish with my wife and the kids to say like, Hey, how do you guys feel if we were to accomplish ABC or XYZ, you know, in order to do this, this is what I think it will take to get there. And a lot of times it might be like, well, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to sacrifice time and these hours or these days with them. So then, you know, I kind of catch myself going through that. Right. And then it becomes, okay, where, where do we draw our lines? Right. I got into real estate to avoid the nights, you know, giving nights away back to my Thank you so much. You know, so my biggest, my biggest thing with, um, with goal setting has been, okay, let me define what I want. You know, it's not always about the money. It's really about the quality of life. Right. And, some way, somehow, I think I've talked about it in some of the mastermind mornings, is that the world conspires, the universe will conspire to achieve your goals once you set those boundaries, right? Now, all of a sudden, I don't have any clients that want to meet at night. You know, they're like me. It's like, hey, if we, and I think it was uh, Stephanie who said, if you attract, if you, if you, when you prospect between a certain time, those are the same people that you need or re refer to will want to do business in that time frame. Right. And it's weird. I never made it an intention. I just said, I don't want to go to someone's house at night. It doesn't make sense. You know, if I'm going to someone's house at night, that we're not selling a house at night, buyers don't come to clients' homes at night. You know, I'm going to go get their listing meeting on a weekend or whatever it is, and we'll, we'll make it work from there. So thank you guys for coming out today. For the most part, I'm going to talk this way instead of talking on screen and the people, oh, do I have let you in? I forgot about that. I'll leave. Is it this one? No, it's not that one. It is participants. And then I'll leave that here. And then if someone pops on, just let me know and I'll turn around and let them let them on here. Okay. So this is thank you guys for coming out today. The today's class. Hey, how we doing? Doing good. How are you? Doing awesome. Thank you. So today's class is one three five setting of basically putting together our goals and how to um, attain those goals. Uh, the 135 I totally copied from Gary Keller and Gary Keller copied it from somebody else and that person copied it from somebody else. So this isn't like stuff that we have to relearn or say that we're, we're creating from scratch. Um, I literally picked it up from Ignite or from somebody else. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of my own spin on it to a degree. And you guys, I'll, I'll, I'll even send you these working notes so you guys have them and all that fun stuff. But the, the purpose of the 135 is to really have a GPS, goal, priorities, and strategies around that. That one goal that we work on can be practically anything. For example, if I wanted to be, and my wife might watch this recording, but if I wanted to be a better husband, one of the three, the, you have to define what that means, right? Being a better husband could mean that I just did the laundry, did the, the dishes, whatever, but there has to be some definition to it. Oh, a bunch of people. Thank you. Oh, they're all in somehow. Thank you, whoever did that. Awesome. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll get some more people in there. Oh, no, there's a co host. So I think front desk is letting everyone in. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I can, oh, I can also look at this screen over here and then hit admit. All right. So as more people jump on, Let's give it a few more minutes before we go into everything. But while people log on, what are some like pressing questions you guys may have that we can focus on aside from like big scary goals, which we're going to need to address? Um, anything that we can we can troubleshoot right now while we're all together? Well, I think in general, my my problem with goals is like I'm I guess I'm pretty good at making long term measurable goals, but I don't know how to dissect it and make it like how to implement it on my day to day. Yeah. You know, like, I could write down what I want, but I don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. That's like my issue. No, that makes sense. And that's where the one, three, five comes into play. I think for years I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a billionaire. But my God, I'm not even a hundred an area at the time. Right. So how do we, you know, inch our way towards that? Um, so as you see here, we work on the one, three, five GPS goals, priority strategies. The idea of, um, of it is for the goal to be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Uh, before we jump into that into further detail, you know, it's easy to say like, well, I'm just gonna double last year, 
right? But if this year I did two deals, I might be thinking a little bit on the smaller scale, right? We want to do something that inspires us to, to be more, become more, do more type of thing. Um, we want to make sure that it's still attainable, it's relevant, it's time-based. So when we, when we think of a goal, whatever that is, putting a time limit to it, and in real estate, it's kind of weird because we don't really have a full year within a calendar year, if that makes sense, right? So for example, if we're telling ourselves, I'm going to start in January, that could possibly mean our first deal won't close until March, right? So you really, you know, your, our years kind of start the quarter before the next year starts. So right now, when you, we hear Simon and other um, leaders and agents say, hey, if you want a jump start on 2022 or 2023, you got to start the year, you know, a couple months before that. So think of it a lot of times when we're meeting someone for the very first time today or anything like that, they're most likely going to be doing business with us because of their timeline or just the, the nature of, of starting an escrow and everything else sometime in January, February, or March. People you meet in January are now going to be essentially doing business with you February, March, April, May, and so forth, right? So that, that's part of the game. Part of the game is finding out people who aren't necessarily just ready now, but also assessing where are they at in their timeline to selling a house and buying a house, right? But we're going to get into that more, more, more so. Sorry if they're in the waiting room. All right. And it's ideal to focus on an income goal. Again, something that's very specific, right? Being a better husband, how can I make that specific? Right? I can only do that through habits and other things. But if we put a, in, in measuring something like a business goal, in this case, we're going to look at something like an income goal, GCI, income specific, it's measurable, it's it's attainable, it's relevant, it's time-based, right? We can, it's a scoreboard, GCI, production, units, volume, the stuff that Stephanie had gone over uh, um, during the sales meeting, which was our agent count, our total sales volume, our total GCI, those are all just, hey, this is what it is. There isn't a story behind it. It's just, these were the results, right? Now, part of feeling that, that number one goal, whether it be an income goal, is having a big why behind it. What is your, why, why do you want to make this money? Why do you want to attain this sales level? Um, what makes you cry? What makes you smile? What makes you become joyful? Um, and this is something I'll, I'll kind of share, and you guys can share too. I wanted to get to a point where I was no longer asking my mom for help, financial help, to raise my kids and time with my wife and all that stuff. I, I wanted to get off of that. I was in a dead end career or dead end business at that point, my mind just was so stagnant, but the only way we could survive was my mom helping us, my wife's parents helping us. And as a man, I just, ugh, just kind of drained me, right? Um, and getting into real estate, I just said, okay, you know, I'm gonna have an open perspective, a new way of looking at things. I, I've read this stuff, Napoleon Hill and positive thinking and all this stuff. I'm gonna put it to good use in real estate. And yeah, my life changed, right? Because I had such an unfortunate period here, but I really knew that my success wasn't just for accolades or, or anything. There was a very specific emotion I was looking for, which was to feel like, hey, we're sustaining ourselves and we can do things with our family, not asking for, for the dole out, right? We were on WIP, food stamp, you know, that's basically food stamps, EBT, all that stuff, government assistance. Wanted out of that as quickly as possible. And you know what, that's what my work ethic and drive was, was put towards, right? It wasn't to make a sale. It wasn't to, you know, get on the recognition list at that other office. It wasn't any of that. Yes, I'm going to help the client, but it's to get away from this situation, right? So having a big reason why might be that. It might be, hey, I just want to go on vacation. So if I want to party, awesome. There's people who crush real estate, crush business, with that idea in mind, right? You just have to kind of know yourself better than somebody else. You know, partying and traveling, not really on the list at that point in life. It was more like, ooh, hey, we've dug ourselves an incredible hole. We just want to break even. And once we broke even, it was, cool, let's go to Disneyland. Great, got to Disneyland. Was, and, and even before that, it was something super simple, like going to Black Angus. You know, it wasn't even like, you know, Maestro's or anything like that. It was just, hey, I want a date night with my wife and awesome, <laughs> right? And that was it without donating blood to get 
freaking gift cards to go to, you know, Chili's or something like that. So that's a little bit of how life was um, seven and a half, eight years ago for us. And that was my reason why, hey, let's get away from that as much as possible. Now, you don't have to be in those dire situations to say, hey, I'm going to change my life. Um, you know, I, I think of this, think of it this way. Uh, we all have parents, right? We're, we're all in real estate at this point. Um, some of our parents have done incredibly well for themselves. Others are, we're like that next generation to take it a step up. Wherever our family's at, think of that as like a mountaintop, wherever we start, right? And now we're not at the mountaintop. You know, we're not at the base that becomes our base and we build up from there, right? So wherever, if you had success in your prior um, business or industry, think of this as like, hey, you're just building upwards. Um, does anybody want to share why, like a big why for you guys, like why you want to achieve a certain goal or anything like that? Sure. sure. Uh, my biggest why, it's really simple. It's the driving factor has been my mom, actually, and her always having committed to taking care of us, saving every penny just to, you know, in Germany, I grew up in Germany, they pay for your driver's license to get your driver's license. It's like, it's a big fee, like it's like $3,000, $2,000 to get it. Wow. And her, she has four children, so her saving up for us to, oh, yeah. <laughs> always having taken care of us and never really thinking of herself. And she already has a credit card of mine, but she, I just want her to take care of herself, not, not having to worry yep. about finances at all and taking her on vacation and taking her away. And that's always been my biggest reason. It really drives me. And when I, when I do my affirmations, I, I look at the picture of her and I, I really, you know, it enforces that and enhances that. Wow. Man, I want to cry. That's, you know what, I think of my mom too. And I remember her telling me, like, if I didn't have to support you and your family, I could retire today. And that hit me like right in between the eyes. Like, wow, I'm holding her back. Yikes. You know, um, my brother too, right? But he doesn't have a family. So I'm like triple the pain financially for her. So, you know, obviously those dynamics have flipped and my brother got even, you know, in his life, we're doing our thing. My mom is retiring this year, right? So one of my goals, check that box off, right? Thank you, real estate and the industry that we're in, right? And the opportunities we have here. So something like that, totally attainable. And when I started putting a dollar figure to that, what does that mean? Okay, so this is our cost of living. This is the cost to break even. This is the cost to have fun. This is the cost to save for the future. Anything above this line, boom, right? And then it became a game. Like, okay, so the game is make 7,000 bucks a month. Done, right? You do a deal, it's like 12, right? Or 15 or whatever your price point is or split. If you're working mentor and cap and all that stuff. And then it became great. Well, how do we have fun? Well, let's do two of those a month. Wow, now we're really having fun. Well, okay, let's have a retirement goal. Now it's just a game of, of like, can we make six figures every month just so we can get to that point? And, and we feel like failures when we only get, you know, when we get to a different number. But it, it, it just kind of evolves, right? Um, anyone else would like to share like a big why? And it's cool if it's that party. I'm, I'm totally all, all for it too. Thumbs up. Anyone online? There's something in the chat. Oh, thank you. You are slightly off camera. Oh, yes, I am, Auntie. Unfortunately, it will be more voice recording than it is uh, in person. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Um, on to the next year. The goal of priority should be measurable targets. We just kind of hit that. And I'll send a copy of this to the front desk. They can just download it and share it. Um, anyone use the CGI calculator by any chance? Anyone, have, anyone familiar with that? So CGI calculator, it was a career growth initiative, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can just open a window here by clicking on this, or if it will open. So when you go here, guys, this is a very fun way to measure, oh, I don't think she'll mind, right? <laughs> And if it's weird, then she just hacked her. I know it's weird. Oh, it doesn't have any goals. You're not currently goal set. <laughs> set my goal. Okay, so this is what it actually looks like, and I'll show you guys a printout of what that would of what that would be, right? So you can actually put a profit goal here, and let's say it is a hundred thousand dollars, 
and let's say your tax rate, now this is pretty high tax rate for hundred grand, but 40%, we have our built-in royalty cap, our company dollar, that would be a high monthly expense. Let's say that's 500 bucks as an example, right? Commission, I'd like to say it's 3%, but let's say it's 2.5 on average. What's our average home price here? That is eight hundred thousand in Valley. What's what's you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. a million five? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say nine 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 nine. Yeah. <laughs> seller focus. Let's say you wanted to focus fifty percent of your time on sellers, or fifty percent of your deals on sellers. You had a conversion rate of seventy five percent appointments, so you went on four appointments, and you would get three deals, three of them, and then out of three appointments, um, three of them would sign with you right submit that your goals have been updated it would actually show in order to make a hundred thousand and adjust for forty thousand dollars in taxes you would need to take in uh, one hundred and sixty six thousand dollars of total gross income your cost of sales is twenty three thousand your expenses every year six thousand bucks you would actually need to make a hundred and ninety five thousand in order to make a hundred thousand right you go into the listings and now it works in reverse. You need eight closings based on 99999 in production. Comes out to, well, they round it up, it's closing a month. But if you did eight closings a year with your goal, you take four months of vacation. <laughs> um, listings taken, you would need four. You would literally just need four. Close four, you would have to take six for that 75% ratio. Again, that's, they round it up to one a month. They're not going to do like point whatever. And again, you take four months off of the year if your goal is 100 grand. Um, listings, appointments, same thing. Monthly goal, monthly recap. It actually shows you if all you did is one, one, one at that price point, you would hit your GCI goal, right? And this is something super basic. Now, now your goals become a math equation, right? Now it isn't, you know, hey, hey Jeff, it, it's not, it's no longer, oh, I need to like break the code. You just have to know what your goal is and why you want that goal, right? Now going to work every day and meeting a client isn't 20 contacts just to make 20 contacts. The game is how do I get one appointment this month or maybe two? How do I get two appointments this month so I can get one listing in order? And, and now if you, don't, if you go on the two appointments and you don't get the listing, was it a matter of your skills or was it a matter of their timing? Right? Was it skills or condition? Condition is something we can't change. They can't sell because health reasons. They can't sell because, hey, kids are in school. We love the school district. We're no way we're moving. Lack of motivation, right? Or if it's a lack of motivation, is it our, our skills that we're not asking the proper questions to seek and get that motivation? To have them say, oh, no, you're right. You know what? I will move after all. I will move up into a larger house and stay within the school district. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Where do I sign? So then that could be skills. So now it's no longer this guessing game about where we're at in business. It's now an assessment about our business. You know, is it the clientele or is it us? A lot of times it's just us, you know, um, hate to say that, right? But it, this is something you guys will have access to. You guys already have access to. Um, the same code you use to access command, the same code that you, you'll use to, to access this. And mess around with numbers. For example, you know, say you wanted to make, $10 million, that's around it. And believe me, this all kind of plays into the one, three, five, right? That million? Yeah. 10 million, there you go, right? And yeah, probably at that point it is 40% taxes. Let's say your monthly expense, you have a staff that you run at $10,000 a month, average home price still the same, still the same focus, all that stuff. You know, it'd be 50 listing appointments per month to take 38, to take 57 closings, listing and buyer side to make a million for GCI in order to take back a million dollars in profit, right? Sounds crazy. Is it a million dollars? Oh, a million, 1.4 a month. So this, granted, this is like $10 million in profit, right? And then you enter it in and there you go your numbers. Now you adjust it for your ratios. I think when I worked with, um, when I first started this, I used, I was using like some kind of crazy number, like 10%. So it's telling me to go on 20 appointments a day and it, it, it helped my psyche because I'll be way more people. But then once you start tracking and the importance of tracking, then you can kind of figure out your ratio there, right? And again, it's more of an assessment game. So I, I, bring, I bring this all up in order to kind of share with you guys that there are tools 
You know, it doesn't have to be a big mystery about why we, we do things. Anyone have a particular number in mind that we can kind of do this together? My goal is 10 million, by the way. Yeah. But no, no, no. Not, not yet. Not yet. Give us about four to five years and, and, it, and it can be, right? You just have to figure out the whole operations team and all that stuff. But get, throw a number, any number. 120. 120. Okay. Yeah. I just did 120, but 120. 240. 240. Okay. No Sorry, guys. That's that's 240. Okay. Now I'm not a tax guy. I just go with their max number. They they, they advise 40. percent So obviously, you can listen to Doug's uh, call where he just invests that money into a set into a self-directed IRA and then put it towards real estate. Right. So high five, Doug. That's what I'm going to start doing. Um, but 40 percent for taxes. Again, the same ratio. Monthly expense. Let's say the cost. On average, is two grand, right? You know, you're paying, you're prepaying your. By the way, if you're an S corp, you should pay less than forty. Right? Way less, right. way less. And then not to mention self-directed IRA, take that money, put it into real estate, put it into mutual funds, yeah. find something with it. So hundred percent, I just go with it because I figured, yeah, hey, yeah. I'm going to set it aside anyway. I'll, I can yes. rewrite it. So again, talk to your tax payer. Again, go with the higher number. That's just four more deals for the sake of this example. But let's say your monthly expenses for marketing and maintaining your license and investing in education is $2,500 a month. That's our business. Our business is us. We invest in coaching. We invest in events. We invest in maybe client appreciation. Let's say all that stuff on average costs us $2,500 a month. Some months it's 1000 Some months it's zero. Some months it's three grand. It'll average out. Commission again, 2.5. Um, it's all what what what's the um, price point that you're looking to working in? Probably around a million, but uh, let's say like one point two. One point two. Higher side. Got it. I think that was one thing that hit me when I moved here. I was man, was I thinking small? Like when I saw the averages here, I was like, holy crap, you guys are killing it. <laughs> um, what's your seller focus? How many listings um, that you would, or how many seller sides would you focus on? I just don't have the enough experience to really know a specific number, but what would be the goal for probably, probably more than 50, probably like 65 or 70. Okay. It's 70. And then for the sake of it, let's say the conversion ratio is 50 mm -hmm. on the listings taken to listings closed. So you took uh, actually no that I take that back. On the listings closed, let's say that is 75. Because you know what, if we're pricing it. Decently, they're, they're getting sold. Yeah. And this number could be a, a whole lot higher. Now, let's say on the lower. Right. Yeah. Listing appointments, the listings taken, let's say that's 50. Half the time they were signing with you, half the time they weren't for various reasons, condition or not. Submit. And now we're looking at, now obviously, you wouldn't need three. Let's go to profit, fund your life, let's make 240 or tax. Estimate be 160. Yes, you're 100 percent right. You probably just self-direct that bad boy, you know, before you, you end up paying that much. Um, cost of sale. Our cost of sale is actually relatively low. This is what gets me when I see other companies promote it. You know, you have some companies that do a, pro, a, a per deal situation, but you're we're only paying 23 with our place. The other place I was at, we were paying a little higher on a company dollar. Um, our expenses, let's say it's 30,000 a year. Your total gross, you would have to make 453 in order to take back the 240. Now, again, I, I love your advice because you can probably redirect some of those tax funds. But now your GCI per month is 37,750. Listings, you would need, yeah, you would need 16 closings, two closings a month. But if you go two a month, that's 24. So you only need the 16, right? Listings taken would be 11. You need 15 for the year. Or to achieve 11 size close, you need 15 taken for that 75% ratio. Two a month, obviously, you'd be killing it at this point. The listing appointments on, you would need, in order to take 15, you need 20, 29 appointments for the year. And if you did three a month, that's 36. So they'll get and they're averaging it out. So your average is 322, 37,750 in GCI to hit that goal, right? Now we're running predictable businesses when we come into the office wherever we go to, to prospect it's not i need three appointments today i need three appointments for the month right now your days are a little bit more manageable if you break that by the week 
you're really looking for one person that whole week between lead follow-up and new lead generation to say, yes, I will meet with you on Zoom. I'll meet with you in person because I am, you know, I don't know what you guys call an appointment, but someone that I will consider an appointment because I've done a pre-qualifying, there's some motivation there and hey, I have a chance of actually listing their property. Yeah, because somebody will literally tell us if we listen that, nah, you know, it's all, I, we can meet, but I, I honestly don't look to sell until my kids finish the school year out. You know, I just don't want any upheaval until May or June. So you, you might go on a listing consultation, but it's not one of those they're going to sign with you right now. I know some agents who will take it signed and just say, hey, we're going to keep it off market because I don't want someone showing up and take, taking the listing in January, February. I've seen that. Um, but for the most part, I consider an appointment, hey, they're, they're in the ballpark of signing with us and we're going to get something done within three to six months, right? Or within two to three months of, of going live. And now this is your goal. Three, two, two, you're looking at $1.2 million market, but don't feel bad. Take the client at 900,000, right? You know, so yeah, one, one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe there's a guy, you guys ever drive along to Panky Canyon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys see the guy from Rodeo, David Salmonson, Shave yeah. Head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's uh, everywhere. Everywhere. He's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have kids, he's you know? Uh, he, grocery store. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's everywhere, right? <laughs> so this is the coolest thing about him. We went, we were buying a house. We went to his neighborhood. He lives in the lakes, like right off of Roscoe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, he, yeah, so he lives in that community, right? Right on the lake, yeah. on the man made lake. We talked to him and he was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't do any deals past Balboa. If it goes past Balboa, like it could be Studio City for a million five. He refers it. He refers out the deal. If it goes past into Santa Clarita, nope. He refers it out. If it goes past, I think he takes Westlake Village. But if it goes east of of, of Balboa Boulevard, he won't do it. Just won't do it. You know, just, he says it's not worth my time. I enjoy dating. I enjoy going out and. That's what he does. My wife and I are like, hey, I drive to like white water to sell houses. <laughs> and this guy's like not taking anything in Panorama City. So <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. But my, my point is that he got very specific. And this brings me back to our, our 135 is that there's a method to the madness about being specific about our lives. Like you, you prospect Simi Valley, the West Valley, and you're very specific about your lifestyle and how you want to achieve things. And you attract clients who fit that mold, right? I've noticed that my clientele in Antelope Valley has been going down. I've been referring more of it out. And our focus has now been the Valley. We've been getting more business in the Valley, right? Now, I have friends who live in Westchester and LA. And we take those two. And that's part of my mindset of like, hey, maybe we get more into referring it out if it allows us to take on more business out here. So there's certain trade-offs, right? And we just have to decide what works for us. Um, anyone else want to do any of the, uh, do an example for themselves? Or we're all going to check the link later. Okay, cool. Awesome. So I will jump out of this page, go here. So I did copy mine for next year. You know, I literally just copy and pasted mine. And my goal is to make a million dollars. $1.2 million next year. I was a nerd because I wasn't concerned about what this number was. So I know that all we needed for our household is 200,000, right? If we took home 200,000, that covered my wife's salary, that covered our mortgage, that covered the stuff and fun things that we want to do. Any dollar above that, awesome. So we're going to save it. We're going to invest it. We're going to do all these different things, right? Yeah, you know, maybe we have a fun vacation, but you know, on our lifestyle of Cub Scouts, um, gymnastics world, Boy Scouts, camping, you know, maybe we go to Disneyland next year. If my wife's into, you know, the large crowd thing. Um, then great, you know, and we figured out the math, a vacation at Disneyland it, for a week, it's going to be five grand, right? Give or take. Hotel stays and all that fun stuff. We do Disney World, it's 10. So you, you, there's a math equation to it. But any dollar above that is, is that, um, taxed at 40%, we figured we would have to make or pay out 422000 Again, that's a pretty high number, but I figure we're going to end up investing that or it's going to go to some of it will go to payroll tax. Um, again, nothing changes. Cost of sales, the same with making four hundred grand or two fifty dollars or hundred grand. the cost of sales is still the same. Cap is 
20,000 for this office, 3,000 to the franchise. Our expenses, this is a real number for us because we're, we're bringing on like an actual salary person, um, not at 10,000, but between a virtual assistant, between our cost per sale, our cost per listing going live, paying a runner and paying a, a, an assistant, it's gonna average out to about $10,000 a month. You know, so 120 right now, I'll tell you now our, our model is right around 5,000 is what we've been paying. And I include coaching in that and our coaching is about half of that, right? Um, our total gross commission income we would need, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sounding a little like dry about it, but it's gonna come out to a million dollars flat, $100,000 a month, 1.2 million would be the engine that, that covers all that. Now again, adjusted for, and I keep going back to investments because the idea is to pay as little in taxes as possible. You can go talk to your accountant about doing a self-directed IRA or um, a SEP IRA, and that's how we're gonna protect our money, right? And we go into closings, yeah, it'll take 60 based on an average commission of 800,000. That's what I'm working on, raising my price point. You know, I think this year we've, we've hit over 800,000 a third of the time, and I can show you those numbers. Um, average commission on deals, 20,000. Listings taken, we would need about 40 for the year or four per month. And I'll sc scroll down, oh, I even, oh, I don't think I added it on here. Oh yeah, five, four, five at 100,000. So now my goal every day when I meet and do my lead follow-up, do my prospecting, is how do I get one to two people every week meeting with me to go over buying, selling, investing in real estate? It's not going 20 for 20 in my day. Like if I, if I hit 20 for 20 in a day, that's a really good day, right? Like 20 people raising their hands saying, Philip, I'm gonna work with you. I'm gonna sell my house with you. We're gonna do all of these things with you right off the bat, right? So like earlier, I was joking for those who weren't on here, I was like, I don't know if we can get the one, three, five. We might only get the one and then maybe go into the three, right? But now I have a model, right? So going back up to that one, three, five, the one goal would be a, an income goal, right? Or a, a lifestyle goal. But if, even if you have a lifestyle goal, what is that income to create that lifestyle? And no coach, no mentor, no team leader, no, nobody can tell you what that is, right? Like I can assume that $500,000 is life-changing money, but when I was brand new, making 50,000 was life-changing money. Like if someone offered me a job at the time to make six figures, I would take it. I turned down a job at six figures this year. There was that opening at Porter Ranch where they were like, hey, you know, we can bring you on as a TL. And I'm like, man, it's not enough, you know, compared to what we can, what we're doing in real estate and what we'll continue to do in real estate, even with the changing markets and all that stuff. Not worth it. Not worth the quality of life that we surrender in order to fulfill someone else's dreams, right? And nothing wrong with taking a job thumbs up just depending on where, where you're at in life right um does anybody want to share kind of what they want to accomplish as a one goal but I, I want to get deep on that one goal thing because we can plan all we want but if there's no like drive to accomplish that one goal it's like you're just showing up just to say that you're a realtor <laughs> right i mean I, i've been there I, I i've gone through the motions at different times in my life and in, even in real estate um, and sometimes we have to remind ourselves, like, what drives us to be entrepreneurs. Because this is an entrepreneur business. Yeah, there's a lot of copy and paste here. Jordan Davis said it best, um, that there is no secrets. You just copy what works for you. But in order to do that, you have to find out what drives you, what moves you, what gets you up in the morning, what says, what gets you to say, hey, I'm not working a job. I'm going to do this for myself, my family, or whatever that is. Anyone else that want to share? Hey, Philip, this is Emilio. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, Emilio? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out here. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, just I, I wanted to share if, it, if you don't. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, you know, my, my one thing is October 1st of 2022, getting back into home ownership um, and then building, building around that. So most of you guys know my wife's a chef, so she wants to once we have our home, we're gonna turn it into a place where we can have a supper club once a month. And then we can hold a, you know, do a business out of that and just have some fun with it too, right? You know, she does a five course meal, 
you know, a little vino for, for the guest. And it's something small and intimate, you know, anywhere from, you know, three to four couples come out to our place and we do that. And then from there, start building investment properties and, and just building out from there, right? Uh, one, one property a year would be the goal, up to five properties and then uh, use the burst strategy for those that know who that, what that is, is you, know, yes. you buy, you renovate, you rent, you, you rent it, uh, you refinance and repeat, right? Once to the point where those five homes are then paid off and um, you know, into retirement, you're living off of the uh, rental income. Yeah, you know, so that's, uh, that's a strong why. Yeah, so that's that's what we're shooting for. That's awesome. I mean, you know, this now is Monty. I have the same plan, so we'll have fun together. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and and a lot and and you know one thing that I've learned over my years, you know, coming from cor- from a corporate job is, you know, learn learn to to enjoy the journey, right? And that's kind of something that Kobe said, you know, when he was around, um, is enjoy the journey. Don't don't think about the end result, uh, because for a long time I was I need it now type of guy. Right. And now I'm enjoying every single day. I jump on these calls with everybody that's on the calls and I just enjoy it, you know, and then celebrate the small wins. Right. Yesterday we went to go hand the keys to a brand new uh, buyer. And I mean, my uh, I had a little bit of tears in my eyes, my 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 hair, in the back of my neck was standing up and it, it's just a good feeling. Right. So when you're in a place of abundance of just, you know, because, you know, you were talking about it earlier, Philip, where you were saying, you know, a lot of times we set goals based on fear, right? My, 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 at the start of this year, my, my goals were based on, I don't want to go back to a corporate job. So if I don't make this work, you know, in six months, I'm going, I have to go start looking for, for a corporate job this year. I, you know, I, I managed to, to build enough business and enough pipeline and enough uh, momentum to where now I'm, I'm based. My goals are based on abundance on what we just, what I just described, right. Is October 1st, you know, we're, we're, we're signing that, we're signing that, that, that mortgage to, to start, to start, you know, getting back into, into home ownership. You know, we, we owned a home at a very young age, sold it off. And then, you know, we've been uh, looking to, to get back into that for a, for a while now, the past, you know, now eight years. So wow. it's a, it's a strong goal and uh, that that's where we're going to go for. So Monty, I will see you in Cancun next year as well, my friend. <laughs> awesome. There you go. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Emilio. Thank you, Monty. Great, Emilio, for you. Good for you. There you go. Thank you, Luis. I'm Luis Alberto. Gracias. <laughs> yes, sir. We're going to have someone in, in here share. Go ahead. Let me ask you, is that like a cash millionaire where you save the million bucks, a million dollars in equity? Like how do you define a million? I mean, I would definitely like to go the whole uh, rental route, especially because I come from a background of um, management and renting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would like to have several condos and um, maybe the Airbnbs and like, rent those out. Absolutely. Put, put a figure to it. Like, hey, year one, this is what we're after in order to buy that first place or that first domino. It, it, it's strange when, when we, my wife and I looked at our goals, one of our goals was to, well, the easy one was to stop asking for help, right? You know, like financial help, right? And the moment we realized like, wow, that just means, or we just need to write a budget down and live within that budget. Like, what does it take? And the moment we, we identified what it took, never went beneath that line again. We closed our A deal and just said, okay, this is our budget. And then boom, it became a game, right? And then when we bought our house, we didn't realize that we had made enough to buy a house. You know, it's like, we just kept saving money. And then I've been helping other people buy homes. And my wife and I were sitting on this house and we knew we could sell it, you know, we can make some money on it. And then that's what led us to buy our, our next house. And then it became, okay, well, we've been doing this and we need to depreciate, we need to find something to invest in. And it just became one of those things where we started snowballing, right? Um, we're making our clients a ton of money. You know, you've seen those bad boy net sheets and our clients are making 300 grand, 400, $500,000. And we're like, oh, well, I changed that family's life, right? You know, Amelia probably changing lives along the way. You've had clients buy homes super, well, relatively now we look back pretty cheap and now they're selling or moving yeah. or doing different things with the equity to leverage it out. Um, Going through passive income through Earth, love it, awesome. 
So that's why we want that to be a very strong reason as to how we're going to do it. Now, the three and one, three, five is the priorities. How are we going to make that one goal happen? And if you scroll down through here, we go into, there's a focus on listing appointments, listings taken and closings, right? And that's not our priorities necessarily. But when we go, when we reverse engineer that further, how do we get a listing appointment? That's through lead generation, right? How do we get into lead generation? We, or how do we, you know, even before that, or even after that, or before the appointment, it's lead follow-up, right? There's a degree of follow-up and there's a degree of meeting people. And so your first priority may be leads. Where, what are, what, how am I lead generating? How many leads, do, how many people do I need to meet in order to get the listing appointment, right? And that might be 10 qualified leads to get one listing appointment whatever that number is, right? Like if you had 10 people who said, yes, I want to sell, how many people do you have to meet in order to find that one person? I, I mean, if you don't mind, um, you probably talk to the more, the most people or you know, not necessarily the most people, there's other people who meet more people, but you seem to meet a lot of people who happen to be motivated. Maybe it's the questions you're asking. It's not just luck. You're asking certain questions. You're approaching in a certain way. How many new leads are you talking to to get someone to say, huh, you know, I'm interested in selling my house and buying a house. Well, I think the reason I get it a lot, like where it's like, oh yeah, in the next month and it ends up selling is just because how many doors I hit, mm -hmm. you know? So when I started, I wouldn't stop door knocking until I spoke to 10 people. Mm. And I wouldn't farm even just the same area until I got a listing from whatever I was already, you know, hosting an open house or, you know, just trying to get even just buyers at the point. Cause when I started, if I didn't get something in three months, I had already put in my head that I'm probably gonna not give up on this. And my first year, if I didn't make hundred K my first year, then I, I knew I had to go back to work. Then. What was your first year with you end up getting? Like 110. <laughs> yeah. And that was after paying split and whatever else you had going on. Yeah. So you really probably made 140 GCI, 150 GCI. A little more than that. I didn't um, have a really good split. I was pretty screwed my first year. Got it. <laughs> Don't mention the but name. <laughs> just because, you know, the way I thought of it is it, just the door knocking. Somebody told me, hey, you know, if you want something quickly, well, you're finally going to hit that one door that says, oh, I have been thinking about selling. Well, how soon do, are you thinking of moving? Well, actually, like now I already have, I'm going to stay with family. And that was, that was money right there. And so now fast forward the clock a little bit, you have, um, you're, you're counting the yeses, right? How many no's does it take to get to the yes? And how much of it is lead follow-up versus just, you met me for the first time and I want to sell my house. The lead follow-up, I mean, even just the, probably the four of the listings I got this year were probably the first year from my first year and wow. all I did was just stayed on that farm because I my first listing did get me four other ones in that same farm I remember so, that from the YPN meetings <laughs> yeah right so yeah. then I just stuck to that and till this day just on Monday I got a call you know from a couple that wanted to sell and see me from mid me and move to Wood Ranch for 1.2 well I got the call from the wife they're actually getting divorced now oh so and that that was i'm gonna say she was it's actually like right here in one of these papers i used to take notes like this <laughs> and i just noticed while you were talking oh my god they're right here thank Jack, god that didn't David blow in and the wind Jeff, <laughs> you know? and um oh man she was uh my lead like number four way from way that one though when i started she what was year the was fourth that? person i spoke to on a door what year was that um 2018 so 2018, let's 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 19. just throw it out there that you touched them four times. Yeah. I at least attempted a phone call four times and consider mailing an email and texting a bonus. 19 four times, eight and 20. This year, maybe you called them three times. So 11 touches spread across three years on top of mailer, on top of email, on top of social media. That's you know, you guys were hearing the joke that it takes 12 to 14 calls before someone says yes so those folks that you started with just two weeks ago some of them will be ready next week some will be ready in a couple of years you're working with the right mental <laughs> um but my, my point in bringing that up is that you the person you're meeting today may not sell with us tomorrow right it's a numbers game because think about this i'll throw this out there 
the people that know us, at least they know us, right? They might take our phone call, but the like, or at least the like and trust situation or know and like is there. They might not trust us right away with real estate because they remember Philip, they remember me as like the idiot, right? The village idiot type of situation. But, you know, I can work on trust, right? Someone who's totally cold, they don't know me, <laughs> right? They don't necessarily like me for whatever reason. Maybe I, you know, said something wrong on the phone. So already it's an uphill battle and there's no chance of getting a trust. You know, they, they eventually like you. They, were, they got to know you. They eventually like you. They eventually trusted you. I, yeah, I, this is like my little commercial as to why I call your SOI is because they, they know you. They, they see your call coming up. They know of you. They know you maybe really personal. They might like you. So you're two thirds of the way there. Now you're just planting the seed as to why they should trust you when it comes to real estate. And it's only to be top of mind because we're not all going to go to parties. We're going to go to Thanksgiving. We're going to go to the holiday parties. We're going to go to the New Year stuff. And we're going to be around people. And if I didn't know anyone in real estate, or if I, if I wasn't in real estate, who would be top of mind for me when my, when my mom's talking about selling her house to retirement in the Philippines, right? You know, would it be Eileen who's been door, door knocking and calling me, you know, on and off for the last couple of years? You know, would it be Tall who I met at an open house and he just happened to be texting me at the time, you know, or is it going to be my, my brother's friend and my brother's like, oh, mom, you should work with, what was your name? I'm sorry. Eddie. 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 Working with Eddie because you, oh, Andy. Is it Andy? Yeah, Andy. Andy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I said Eddie. Oh, God, man. Yeah. yeah. Or is it going to be Andy who's just top of mind and he's been, he already prospected my brother. And my brother's like, oh, I trust Andy, you know, way back when he used to hold my hair vomiting, you know, whatever <laughs> the crazy stories are that make us who we are, right? You know, and then it becomes a 3D sale for Andy, right? And that, that's kind of the point, right? It's just being top of mind. So in, in, the, in the three strategies that we went into, into real quickly, because it's, all right, we got some time. So if, if you write on your sheet of paper under your one goal, whatever that is, right? One of your strategies is, is leads. How do we get more leads? Lead generation. The five strategies behind that might be some version of contacting your SOI. And if all you did was SOI, that's all I'm doing. You can break that into five strategies. Your core group of people, the Andes of the world in your life who will say yes to you no matter what you're doing. I could be selling cars. I could be selling vitamins. I could be selling air conditioners. But I know my wife, my mom, my brother, my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, my aunt, my cousins, all of them would support me. They would say, hey, if you need an HVAC, talk to Philip. You know, I don't even know what an HVAC is, but you should talk to Philip. That's what he sells. That's what he does, right? Those are the people who, like, no matter what I'm doing in life, they're going to support me, right? After your core group of people, you might go into your past clients. Now, Eileen, you have a past client database. are brand new. I wouldn't have a past client database to work with. But I'll look at my prior career and say, wait, I was in insurance. I'm going to look at all those past clients. You know, I might have had a job working as a teacher. I'm going to look at all my past coworkers, right? Whatever that industry was, look at that as your point of contact. Your third group is your allied resources. Your allied resources, even if you're brand new, are the people you write checks to. My accountant, my insurance agent, my financial advisor, if you have one, my attorney who handles my trust my barber who cuts my hair, the guy and gals who do my, my wife's nails, if she, if she actually went to a, a nail salon, right? You know, all those people we, we Venmo that we pay services to, you know, our landscaper, our solar guy, solar, all those, all those representatives immediately start reaching out to them and let them know that you're in real estate. Or if you have been doing real estate for a while, ask, hey, how can we network? How can I help grow your business? How can we help grow each other's businesses and, and, and help protect our clients? After that, you have your general SOI, Gen Pop, right? Those are all of the people that know us through someplace, somewhere. We haven't even gotten to social media yet, but I'm talking like the kids' schools, you know, the kids' extracurricular events, our places of worship. And we're, it's not for us to wear the sales hat and say, hey, you know, Christ be with you, buy a house for me. None of that. <laughs> it's more like there's a specific way to embed ourselves in their minds as a realtor without being obnoxious about it, you know, buy from me or, or no, no PC with you, right? There's a way to make that work. Um, 
And then you break that into segments. I'm sure there's more than two segments with the people that you know in your circles, right? And then the fifth one is social media. You know, you go through that bad boy if you're on Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. Tons of people there that you can literally pick 10 a day because um, Facebook will, will flag you if you constantly send the same copy and paste. You get flagged and you won't be able to they'll shut down your account, you know. But if you do five to 10 a day, even 15 a day of, hey, Philip, it's been a long time. This was thumbing through my Facebook and thought I'd say hello. Copy and paste and just change the name and send that to five people, 10 people a day that you haven't talked to in so long, right? And that's a way to break that. And that's just five within your SOI. If you wanted to be a little bit more macro on it, SOI would be one, right? Then and you, if you need to break that down, your, your next strategy might be geo farming. It might be micro farming. It may be open houses. It could be for sale by owners. It could be non-owner occupants. It could be, you know, working agent referrals. There's people who literally just comb through KW Connect and find agents who need realtors in the valley. And then they pay a whatever, 25, 35% referral fee. And they take the lion's share on whatever the deal is here, right? You know, so there's so many ways to do it, you know, and, and we can go down a, a rabbit hole on that, right? But the point is, is that if you have that one burning goal and the reason why that number will help achieve it, that feeling or emotion or, or um, reality that you're looking for, it's the how will figure itself out, right? Like we have this really cool CGI calculator where you can figure out how to make a million bucks a year or whatever that number is, but it's meaningless without finding the emotion behind why you want to accomplish it. You know, like making six figures for me was like, had no meaning, like absolutely none until I realized like, oh, I want to do this fun stuff. We want to move out of Panorama City. We want to do other things. Ah, this is why I'm doing bold. It wasn't just to get an extra deal out or, or accomplish a goal that other people are accomplishing. It's because I don't want to drive from Panorama City to Woodland Hills, to Porter Ranch, back to Woodland Hills, back to Panorama City, back to Granada Hills and do that triangle of death of driving, <laughs> you know, um, and still try and effectively run a real estate business. I want control over my life and I want to control my driving destination. And when we got that simplistic, as stupid as that sounds, it's like the world opened up. It was like, okay, let's sell our house. Let's figure out, let's get pre-qualified for loan. Let's put our house in the market and let's do for ourselves what we do for other people. And then it just became easy. Once we figured out what we wanted, and you guys ever see that uh, Ryan Reynolds thing, that movie where he's like, what do you want? Oh, what do you, yeah. what was it? It's a meme. Yes, it is. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what do you want? It, the notebook. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. You know, once you figure out what you want, everything else is kind of, will figure out its way. I mean, you plug into like the morning mastermind, any one of them, they'll drop the five secrets, you know, practice, lead generate, lead follow up appointments, negotiate contracts. What does that mean, right? But when you know what you want, it's like, oh, that's where I get the leads. That's where I get my listing appointments. That's where I get paid, right? Ultimately, when you follow that, that line all the way through. Um, another strategy, if you guys want the third, a second priority in order to, to get there would be your marketing, right? Or you guys think of leads, listings, leverage. So if you go from leads to listings, how do we focus on listings? Listings is a priority. Right. And it might be outlining my listing appointment. What do I do before the appointment? What do I do during appointment? What do I do after an appointment? Getting that process down. What do I use for marketing? Who do I use for marketing? What are my, what are, what are, what is my priority when I get a listing? Do I micro farm it? Do I door knock it? Do I mail it? Do I social media it? Do I, there's a bunch of strategies behind that, right? More than five. Or if you were to boil it down, it's process, it's marketing. It's post closing, being able to follow through. Then the very last priority would be leverage. How do we leverage ourselves? I don't want to be the ultimate administrator. I suck at paperwork. So I'm going to hire a TC, right? You know, maybe one of the goals, and it was always going until we accomplished it this year, was hire a virtual assistant, right? How do I get a runner? How do I get someone to like do all this stuff that's functionary versus fiduciary? Where are the fiduciary? We handle the money, we handle the big stuff, we're paid to negotiate, we're paid to put, to have influence and gain commitments from other people, right? 
an assistant can show up put a lock box on. Sometimes we, we drive, it's over glorified, right? To put a Supra on a, on a house. But that same time of driving out to Newberry Park, or in my case, maybe Santa Creed or whatever, could be used to make five more phone calls and maybe get two more appointments. And if you get one appointment that successfully eventually closes, what was that, 20 grand, right? 20,000 bucks or whatever your numbers, on your numbers, that's like 35, you know, maybe 40 grand on your numbers, right? I mean, heck, I was, I was excited to make like 500 bucks <laughs> you know, for my mom at one time, you know, and all that, all that fun stuff. Um, and then that might be other things. So to kind of summarize, and we'll go into Q&A, have one big goal, something that's smart. And then I forgot my own notes. I think I copy and pasted it here. You know, make sure it's specific, make sure it's measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. And what I mean by relevant, like if I put $10 million as my goal next year, it's not relevant to me. Like it would be awesome if I sold like a mega house and got a mega lead and then made, made that GCI or whatever, but it, it's not, it'd be like dumb luck for me, right? It wouldn't be something like I, I need this because this is what it, it's going to relate to in my life. It would just be a bonus. A million dollars like to me is, whoa, that's a shock to my system. I want to be the first millionaire in my family as well. I'm going to shock my world and we're going to do this, right? We're going to change our family's lives forever. Even during the pandemic, we retired. My father-in-law was kind of cool, but he got too bored at work. So he went back to, you know, working, you know, he was getting big and he was just like not happy being home all the time. So, you know, but he works out of choice as opposed to having to work to help pay bills or anything like that, right? Um, three priorities. And in, in super simple, if you just take it out of the millionaire real estate agent book, leads, listings, leverage, you know, and any, and anything in our goals, leads is part of it. Listings is where you gain the most traction and you control your income. Take it from me, last year we made 161, 161 in, in, in total GCI. And by the first part of the year, we were already at like 180, you know, in the first quarter of this year over the last year. And our income has tr dramatically gone up with the volume, not necessarily the same, but pretty darn close. And it was because we controlled our listings. I mean, on the listing side, we were earning a little bit more commissions, different things that, we, that offset our marketing. So we were actually not only grossing more, we were netting more money as well. So the focus on listings, ultimately, regardless of the market, even if it became a buyer's market, you still want the listings. You still want people calling you instead of you showing 50 houses. 50 people showing your house, different quality of business life there. And then leverage, how do you grow beyond ourselves? And leverage might also be coaching, might be mentoring. You know, like if I were brand, brand new to business, mentoring would be the way to go through your collapsing timeframes. And this is all the 135 is, is a tool to collapse timeframes. So we're not like constantly repeating the same failures. Because if, if we do something, we fail, we gain experience. Awesome. Thumbs up. But if we learn from someone else's failures, we're gaining wisdom, right? So why does Andy have to relearn all the dumb things that I was doing when he can learn from me, I lean at other people and be like, oh, so don't be a knucklehead, you know, at the door or whatever the situation is. Now you don't relive the same mistakes. You just gain the wisdom and you take it from there. All right. We got some minutes. Um, Q&A. Anyone have questions or any scenarios? Oh, let's see. Hey there. Who does BRE or BRR? Yeah, just a uh, bigger pockets podcast. Thumbs up. Um, Young Professionals Network. So he's going into the networking BRR model. All right. How about here inside the inside the room? Any questions or anything we could help with? So when you started, Phil, I'm just a little curious. And, sure. Uh, so when you started, what was uh, your main uh, your main market or your main you know? Uh, or to the market? Was it your SOI or was it more <laughs> uh, lead generating as far as cold calling, door knocking, et cetera? Yeah, I'm with you. So I made the mistake of not contacting my SOI. I had found out a few months into me um, getting my license that my cousin bought a house with a part time realtor at her hospital. Actually, it was um, Leo Bato from your office or one of your offices. Yeah. yeah so he, he was a full time nurse or worked at a hospital. Yeah. And my cousin ended up buying her, her first home pre or post foreclosure with him. And she told me, God, Phil, I, 
I didn't even know you're a realtor. Shame on me, right? Like my own cousin didn't know. I, I thought everyone knew I was a realtor, right? Because I posted on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> didn't matter. Like built from that because like all of my family is from Fresno, mm -hmm. San Diego. Yeah. I'm like I'm almost pretty much living here. Would, would you recommend at least telling them and then if they're interested, then you can have this person somebody? Oh, absolutely. They're usually a night script. And, I, and I'll get back to your question because to answer your question, I did everything cold and it was a mistake. I still got leads. I still got listings. I closed deals. I think I would have been able to do it a lot faster if I did both, right? Because today, a lot of my, my leads are SOI from those who I started with in 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the cold people that I met, the not meds who became, you know, like, contacts over that time it grew in that period of time as well so i'm not bashing it but i felt like i would have done more if i reached out personally to the people who ultimately today support me right and are my advocates in my core group yeah. if i told them early on what was happening they would have either bought for me they would have referred me it would have happened the, the time frame would have condensed a lot faster and then to answer your question, they're, they're, in, during Ignite, I know we do that condensed one day, one weekend, one week Ignite program, but there's a, a dialogue on there where you're from out of area or you're calling out of area and, and it goes something like, hey, Philip, I just wanted to give you a call. As you know, I'm down here in Southern California and I just started my real estate career with Keller Williams Calabasas. If you don't know, that's pretty close to Los Angeles. We're kind of outside in the LA area. I was curious to know if you knew of anyone who was looking at buying, selling, or investing here in the area. And then I say, you know, you tell me yes, no, whatever. And then I go into, great, by the way, I have a vast network with my company, Keller Williams. We're literally all over the country. I was curious as happened to find out if you knew of anyone out in Fresno, fill in the blank, that is looking to buy, sell, and invest in real estate. Oh, it's funny you mentioned that. My cousin or your, our cousin is looking at selling her house. Really, I did not know that. And then you go into the great before she does anything. Do you mind if I give her a call or whoever that person they're recommending? Give them a call, get connected with them, let them know, hey, you can help them, and then connect an office, you know, vet the agents on that deal and get them out there. And a great way to do it is, is KW Command. The KW Command has a connect feature that connects you with the offices. And then you can, I, I base it on who's, who's in the MAPS program, the mastery program with MAPS then I know that they're being coached and they're investing a grand a month and then some in their professional and personal growth. So I typically will refer it to someone in the same program. And the off chance maybe, maybe we have the same coach or we're part of the same group, but the maps for me is, is how I filter that out. But absolutely, I would call them because everybody knows somebody and yeah. But yeah, my, my first deal, just so you know, was a total accident. I was showing a house to someone in my SOI and my wife was with me and then a couple um, these two ladies and their mom wanted to get into a house they didn't have a realtor so my wife helped out our friend i spoke with them they eventually were my first clients right so moral of the story do both you know especially early on when you're trying to figure out what your method is you know like if we if we were football players you know i have, I have no idea am i playing defense offense whatever i'm gonna try all the positions and figure out oh I don't want to get hit. I'm, I'm going to be a quarter or a punter or whatever, right? So I can avoid getting hit by somebody, right? Whatever the analogy is, if you're into baseball with the Dodgers, like, oh, well, I guess I want to be a closer. I want the pressure on me. I'm going to be whoever for the bullpen or, you know, bad example. I'm a basketball guy. So, yeah, yeah okay. I, I'd rather be Steph Curry and just shoot threes all day and steal the ball, three and D. I'm not going to bang in the paint, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's not me. So like, I know door knocking and all that stuff. I did it and thought, man, the valley sucks. Get to 110 and I'm burning up in slacks, you know, but I found if I went to a networking event around other business owners, around other people, it was AC always. There was coffee and donuts. It's like, dude, I can do this. I can meet people here. I can bring value. I can follow up like a madman and, and be a consultant, a resourcing consultant. So if the game is being, for me, being a resource and consultant, how can I be more of that around an audience that would, I can work on having them listen to me and vice versa. And I found that networking was the way for me or plugging into other events where I could be a resource on a volunteer basis, like the kids' school, 
and that's how I planted myself in the head of in the heads of, of, of you know in some of those relationships. I would volunteer because I enjoyed being around my kids, right? I could see them from afar doing their thing, and parents were like, "Oh, what do you do? Well, what do you do?" And then we went back and forth, and we went connect on different things, right? Um, so that was that question. Any, any other questions about that, or anything we can help out with? I don't have to rush to get the kids from school today, so I'm cool. Okay. What did they, what, what kind of, I mean, in the past they had a lot of those going on, but right now it's just, there's a Simi Valley Community Center. Like, is that what you're talking about? What, well, it depends on what resonates in your, in your life, right? For me, when early on. Music events. So is that what you're talking about? Like, yeah, well, what, do you, do you have kids? What, what do you like doing for fun? I don't know. Okay, no, per perfect example. I'm single, but like, what, what would there be for somebody like me, for instance, just starting off, like, where do you find a common ground? Maybe music? It, is music something you're into? Yeah, music maybe. Oh, what kind of music? There's a convention that, I don't know, like any kind of classical music right now? Are you into classical music? Yeah. Then I would find something like on meetup.com and find groups that meet that up around. Like, okay. Absolutely. And then, it, you know, for example, this is an example, but maybe you're, you know how to play the piano and you have a, an inside passion for teaching others how to play piano. Maybe you play the piano at a senior care facility and volunteer time for an hour and a half and play the piano for them, right? And it's not to, to gain needs. You're not putting a sign out there, hey, I'm a realtor, leave me your, your contact information. It's like, no, I, I enjoy doing this. And, you know, people will naturally ask, so what do you do? I mean, you're here on a Friday afternoon. Oh, well, I just started my real estate career, but I really enjoy this portion of it, right? I really enjoy being able to play piano or whatever it is. And this is my opportunity to give back to a community that's giving back so, so much to me, right? Like for the kids' schools, natural, they're doing a lot for my kids, right? So I, whenever I could volunteer, my wife and I could volunteer, we're there, right? Um, and so if we were single and we had discretionary time, I'm into comic books, right? I'm into basketball. So I'll probably find myself in those circles um, because I want to be more in sync with my kids. It's all about whatever they do, <laughs> right? But you, you have the advantage of, of kind of designing that for yourself. And that might be your public outreach. Maybe one of those strategies that you put on there is a strategy to give back. Um, Gary Keller, and he got it from somebody else, he calls it strategic giving. If we're going to give, let's give strategically. Let's not just give because, oh, hey, this is where I think I'm going to get a lot of deals. Let's give where we feel, A, I'm passionate about it, you're passionate about it. And B, you feel good about that time that you're you're putting there. Awesome. Looks like everyone's ready to go get some coffee. All right. <laughs> Any other questions before we go? Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah, right. you guys. Philip. Oh yeah, yeah. Far away. Philip. Hey, that, yep. that, that, this is a Google document. Where you got this from? Uh, you know, oh, I copied screen. it. I just typed it, but I I'll, I'll share it with um I shared it with the office. I'll ask uh, the front desk to go ahead and email it to everybody. Um, but yeah, and it, you can re rehash it. I think I put in the in the chat here the link. But when you get the email, this is a you can just copy and paste that into your into your search bar. Oh, okay, great. I thought you I thought you wrote that. I was like, damn, <laughs> that's, oh. that's a lot of information. <laughs> no, I totally I totally rehashed everything. Some of yeah, it notes in other places. Yeah, I was I was thinking how behind I was already. <laughs> oh no, you're good. Like okay, I, I'll okay. literally just copy and paste all this stuff into the chat. Um, but now front desk will be able to send that all out there and then go from there. So okay, my friend, thank you so much. This was great. Hey, great. you guys got it. Hopefully, it made a lot thank of you. Stuff. works more in person than on Zoom. But uh, yeah, hopefully, okay. this is great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, my man. Thank you, Philip. Bye bye. See you guys later. I did actually. Okay, so I started using it and I'm talking to James Bond. I don't know if you're familiar with them. But they couldn't, they pulled me out, they pulled out like a list. Mm -hmm. and they were always able to pull out like 10 numbers. I mean, that's for a number. Oh no, it should be way more than that.